Loch Erne is a large lake in County Fermanagh, Northern Ireland. It's fed by the River Erne from the Republic of Ireland, eventually draining back into the Republic of Ireland before reaching the sea. Loch Erne has a long history of use for trade, for fishing and for recreation, and this has made it vulnerable to the spread of invasive species. Because of this, the lake is being researched for Aquacross, a substantial European research project which aims to support efforts throughout the continent to protect aquatic biodiversity in freshwater, coastal and marine ecosystems. Loch Erne is an amazing place because uh, it's, well, it's clearly a beautiful environment, but it's also been uh, subject to human activity for millennia. There's such a diverse range of habitats and species. It's a huge importance to, um, well, tourism. And there's obviously the ESB side of things too, you know, the, the production of the hydroelectricity. Uh, there's a huge angling fraternity, the boating. The farmers rely on it a lot. So, you know, it's a huge water source for a lot of stuff around here. So. Um, it's worth a lot of money. The tourists that come to Northern Ireland, you know, water is, is very important and they are, they're coming to see the urn and they're coming to see the wildlife that the urn supports. So it, it's very, very important to the Northern Ireland economy. And that's why we absolutely have to look after it and, and make sure we maintain this, this jewel in, in Northern Ireland's crown. There's um, various complex issues that need to be tackled in order to improve water quality and improve the system in general, you know, and hit the marks in terms of the Water Framework Directive and the various pieces of legislation and policy that exist both sides of the border. And um, it's, it's quite complex in terms of management because you're trying to manage one side which affects another side which then ultimately affects the other side again. Invasive species, such as nuttles, waterweed and zebra mussels, are one such challenge for management. They have been brought into Loch Iron from other locations, on boats, on fishing tackle and by other means, and they have spread throughout the system rapidly. I remember coming as a child, uh, which is more than a few years ago, uh, but you, you know the the urn was just full of sort of algae, and and when you looked into the water, you just you know you saw a few inches down into the water, and and that was it. With the zebra mussels coming in, uh, you know they have taken all of that algae out of the system, but then that's introduced further problems because now you're getting weed growth coming up from the bottom of the loch, and that's causing different problems to the algae, as well as causing ecological problems. These invasive species create difficulties for recreational users of the loch. From a fisherman's perspective, um, you know, they're out there trying to fish the lake. They're coming from Germany, France, all over the EU. Um, they're losing tackle. They're struggling to get, you know, proper, uh, I suppose, access to the fish through the bays. And then from the boating perspective as well, um, you know, a lot of expensive boats are trying to make their way up and down the lochs. Their, their props are getting snared and snagged in weed. You know, prop shafts are breaking, boats are breaking down in the middle of the lakes. It's difficult to prevent invasive species being introduced and also to manage them once they're there. A further challenge is that nutrients entering the lake from human activities, such as farming, encourage Nuttall's waterweed to grow. Yet farming is a major industry and source of income in the area. Understanding the impacts of these threats to the loch and finding new ways to manage them is the focus of the Aquacross research project. This study of Loch Erne is just one of eight case studies being investigated under the Aquacross project. The Aquacross project is a big European project uh, focused on uh, delivering the European biodiversity strategy. It takes a sort of end-to-end -end approach, uh, looking at human activities, the pressures that these cause on the environment, 
the changes in environmental state caused by these pressures and in turn how changes in the environment affect human well-being and tries to incorporate these into management plans. The management plans developed in Aquacross are based on the concept of ecosystem-based management. Well, ecosystem-based management is a kind of an integrated approach that integrates the connections between land, air, water, all living things, including human beings and their institutions. Uh, and what we've done here is bring different users of the lake together and try and integrate the connections between the lake itself and the human activities and to, to use our understanding of these to balance the management objectives. One of the proposals to manage the invasive alien species in the lock was to raise the water levels during summer to allow boats to pass over the waterweed. It's, uh, I suppose, an idea that was floated by our CEO in terms of, uh, you know, it's certainly worth addressing. Um, we, we do know that, you know, reducing the light penetration into the bed of the lake can uh, help reduce weed growth. So um, scientifically, it's, it's worth trying. Um, in terms of you know about the boating navigation in the summertime, you know often by re increasing the lake level by even a foot or even two feet, you can get the the props and the watercraft out of the reach of the the, the weed. However, raising the lake levels could also have important repercussions for some local stakeholders. Well, clearly, raising the water level would have uh, impacts on farmers. Where right? if you inundate land, the farmers lose some of their work in land. Um, also, uh, Fermanagh has a history of flooding. They say that, uh, though you wouldn't believe it today, they say that in, in uh, summer, Loch Erne is in County Fermanagh, but in, in winter, Fermanagh is in, in Loch Erne. Um, uh, so flooding is a big concern. I suppose if you can somehow incentivize farmers and show them that there's something very positive to, to this and, and that they can get some sort of financial gain out of it, uh, you know, that that might be a way forward and it could be uh, that they plant, uh, you know, a certain amount of marginal land with trees that perhaps if you're looking at sort of will, will, willow or alder, uh, you know, they, they would tolerate that sort of uh, water levels been, been risen, things like that. And it could again be a crop for the farmer as well that he can harvest and then sell on. So there could be a win-win a situation here. These proposals for managing invasive alien species will undoubtedly need further discussion. The stakeholder group set up for the Aquacross project has helped to generate debate. Sets a seed and gets everybody talking and thinking about maybe studies they know are being done somewhere else and, and just sort of sharing information. We're all trying to do the same thing, so it's very, very valuable that we, we all get together now and again. The integrated and collaborative research carried out in Aquacross highlights the value of balancing different policy objectives and stakeholder needs, experiences which could be of value for policy in the rest of Europe and even beyond. Well, what we've tried to do is bring together a lot of different policies. So you have the Water Framework Directive, you've got the Regulation on Alien Invasive Species, you have the Habitats Directive, you have the Birds Directive, um, uh, you have the Common Agricultural Policy, um, and we've tried to find ways of meeting the environmental objectives of Water Framework Directive and Habitats Directive, while at the same time uh, combating alien invasive species and uh, allowing farming to continue. So it ties all the directives together in an integrated approach. I think you can see what we're trying to do is absolutely the right thing because we're very very much into sort of, you know, what impacts our industry, our farmers, or Northern Ireland water are having on the aquatic environment. And you can sort of see from the work that has been done on this particular project, how that does impact on the ecology of the urn. We, we do still have a long, long way to go, but hopefully uh, we're making steps and, and moving in the right direction. <laughs>